please welcome to the stage the Chief Experience Officer for DIP, Matt Humphreys. Hi everybody, thanks so much for coming. I know it's been a long day, a lot of exciting news, uh, but I'm going to share with you a topic that's pretty exciting to me as well. Um, in 2009, after much, much research on the topic of responsive web design, a guy named Luke Robluski published a book called Mobile First. And in it, he touted the benefits of designing from the bottom up to take advantage of ever-growing mobile market segment at the time. By focusing on what could be done on mobile devices instead of starting our website designs on larger desktop viewport screens, we deliver better experiences for our users. Well, I'm here to tell you the mobile first is dead. And starting today, I'll be abandoning this approach in place of a much better way of creating unique experiences and effective mobile experiences for my clients. <laughs> There's, that's my hype girl over there. So what will I be covering today? A brief summary for everybody, just in case you don't want to stick around for this action. Um, I'll start by talking about how we got here, followed by the current state of, uh, of how we do things, um, where we failed and where we continue to fail, and what we're ultimately going to do to fix it. So let's get started. Our mobile journey so far, this is our little a brief history. It started quite a long time ago, actually. Our, our mobile journey started when Martin Cooper, a Motorola employee, made the first call from a cell phone in April 1973. That's when we started this mobile phone journey. Things have changed quite considerably since then, so much so that the word phone has a completely different meaning than it did 35, 45 years ago. Let me take you through a, a little bit of a more recent timeline that we are all aware of. In 2003, BlackBerry unveiled the first integrated phone that included email, SMS, a web browser, and don't forget, BBM, everybody remember BBM? In 2007, the Apple iPhone was launched and things changed forever at that point. Not only did it have a web browser, but it had one that rendered HTML like the desktop. In 2009 came iPad, which added another dimension to complexity. And then fast forward to today, we're balancing screen sizes that span from 320 pixels to 5,000 plus pixels. A slightly different situation than when Luke Robluski wrote his book. So why are we here to talk about this? Why am I so passionate about changing our direction and the methodology by which we design commerce experiences and any experience on the web? Because the stats don't support continuing in the same way that we're doing it right now. Mobile sites just don't do as well as their desktop counterparts. And in fact, it's a fact that all of us have come to know, and I guess we're accepting it for some reason. But here's a little refresher for those of you. These are 2019 numbers for traffic per medium. Desktop in at 37%. This is actually seems kind of high to me, that, but this is a, across all of North America in 2019 so far. Mobile at 53% and tablet at 10% of, mo of website traffic. Here is the compared uh, that stat to revenue. Here is uh, what we're looking at for desktop. Desktop has 56% of revenue, mobile at 32%, and tablet at 12%, which is probably the only one that has a little bit of parity here. The comparisons could, should be pretty obvious, and this shouldn't be a surprise to most of you, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be shocked by this disparity. And we need to do something about it. And it starts with improving our processes from the ground up. For those of you that aren't familiar with mobile first, let me just go, go through a little bit of what it really meant to us when we heard this for the first time. In my design circles, when we first heard the term mobile first, and we introduced the approach to new projects, it might have not, not been exactly how Luke Robluski intended it, because many of our current clients were desktop-only sites. Uh, at certain points in uh, the early 2000s, we were only designing for 600 by 800. It was a ha the happy days of ignorance. And then, oh, wow, is it a 1024 by 768 website we're designing now? Let's check the website stats. Oh, yeah, but the CEO still has this small screen, 8 by 6. The complexity got a lot uh, higher as we introduced multiple viewport sizes. 
In actuality, what happened when we first started out, we continued design for desktop first. Okay, come on, don't, don't pat yourself on the back. You didn't just start designing mobile first when Luke said, said to do that. We designed for desktop first, but we thought, okay, how is this going to look like on mobile? How is this going to reshape on mobile? Okay, let's just think about it. And that's what we did. We said for a couple years, we were like, let's just think about it. Um, that worked out pretty well for a while. Uh, but, uh, oh, wait, I think I'm on the wrong slide. No, I'm on the right slide. Then we started to put our mobile artboards next to our desktop ones, okay? And we were designing in tandem, so that we got a little bit more sophisticated at that point. Um, thankfully, over the last few years, we've actually embraced it, and this is only in the last few years where, where I've told most of my design team, let's just start designing for mobile. Let's think about desktop a little bit. But it's taken a while, and, and you know what? It's coming too late, because we need to start abandoning that process. Um, the challenges of a mobile-first approach are huge. Uh, we dragged our heels, and mainly because designing with the constraints of a mobile viewport is very limiting. I'm sure you all know this. There are challenges that I'm sure many of you have faced when designing for a mobile screen. Here are some of the challenges. The first such challenge is starting on mobile really limits what we can do. And if we're trying our best to optimize the experience to be responsive, then we're sticking to mobile conventions from the start. Secondly, the concepts that we create for mobile tend to be severely limited by the mobile canvas, which is vertical. This affects our ability to showcase compelling images of our product, show more descriptive copy, and tell that horizontal story. And lastly, much of what we're designing as far as navigation is concerned needs to be moved out of view and out of sight and off canvas, which handicaps our user's ability to get from point A to point B. Now, as much as there are disadvantages, there are advantages of mobile-centric approach. The story here isn't that we should abandon designing for mobile as a first step. Of course we should design mobile for a first step. You saw the stats earlier. In fact, this should continue. There's so many advantages of this approach. The issue is that we're thinking too much about how our designs will look at other breakpoints. And that is what is limiting us. Ultimately, we still find it challenging to see past the desktop and concentrate on the capabilities of the mobile device. And we're still only scratching the surface of mobile capabilities. What we do need to do is do more off canvas. We need to build a system that leverages both the horizontal and the vertical planes. We need to do more with gesture and touch. We've really spent too long perfecting the swipe and tap, which is still probably the only thing that the majority of you are doing in your mobile designs. And we need to do more with device-centric features like user location, device positioning, motion, audio, and voice. So how do we change our thinking? All right, for those in Canadians, Canadians in the audience. Canadians in the audience probably grew up with this Heritage Canada commercial. We all heard Marshall McLuhan say, the medium is the message. Let's start there. What McLuhan meant was that we shouldn't be restricting our media based on mediums. The delivery meeting medium has just as much significance as the message itself. And we can start by thinking about taking advantage of some of the capabilities of mediums when creating our message. Historically, we've done a poor job of adjusting to new mediums. So it's not a surprise that it's taking us so long to do better at smartphone design. A key example of this comes from our beloved pop song. Does anybody know why a typical pop song is roughly three to five minutes in length? Anybody? Yes, sir, at the back. You're thinking too recent in the future, my friend. Yes. There is a certain thing right here on, on my screen that uh, is called the 45. The 45 could only hold a certain amount of time. That was roughly three and a bit minutes. And that has restricted the length of pop songs 
to be roughly that same length and has transferred across multiple medium pivots that we've just heard about. Another critical medium failure. Does anybody know what the first TV show that was widely broadcast was? Anyone? I'll fill that one in for you just so that we don't have uh, any contributions. They took cameras and pointed them at, ra at the radio show. That was the first TV show broadcast widely. We've failed tremendously throughout history. It's sort of like, you know, you know botching these pivots the media is, is, is sort of like baking a cake in the wrong size pan, putting bicycle tires on your car, or trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. And that's what the mobile first approach is like. And that's where we fail. So what can we do to make these mobile experiences better? And what would Marshall McLuhan recommend? There, that's Marshall McLuhan, by the way, for those who don't know. The solution is, is fairly straightforward, but will take some careful calculation. Not enough time for me to cover the entire methodology in this short talk. But it would also take the right kind of clients for us to deliver on this methodology. Let me go through some of the things that, are, that I consider our solution. We need to start taking advantage of media queries to push boundaries. Now, media queries level four is upon us, and attributes like height, aspect ratio, orientation, resolution, and grid can all be queried. As designers, we need to know these queries inside and out so we can understand how far the sides of the boxes can be pushed. We need to leverage device-centric features to improve usability. More multi-touch, more extended canvas, more use of the inputs and outputs that are unique to mobile devices, such as motion and speech. And ultimately, we need to abandon the shackles of desktop and loosen up our grid that locks us into this tightly woven responsive framework. So mobile first is done. It's over for me, and I hope it's over for you. We need to start a new movement that embodies diversity of the mediums that we have at our fingertips. This is our new true north. And that methodology where we look at all mediums as unique delivery methods and leverage their capabilities while respecting their own limitations is an approach I'm calling medium-centric. More to come on this topic. Thank you so much for attending. Join me in a change for making things better for commerce. Bye, everyone.